For 15 consecutive years, the number of sockeye salmon returning to the Fraser River has been declining at an alarming rate. Now, as Linda Aylesworth tells us, scientists are recommending we pull out all the stops to find out why, long before a federal judiciary inquiry issues its report in May of 2011. For the last two decades, sockeye salmon returns have been steadily declining in the Fraser River. Then this year, their numbers collapsed. The 10 million forecast to return, only one and a half made it home. Last month, the federal government ordered a judicial inquiry into the matter, but it won't wrap up until May 2011. A long wait for a species clinging to survival. I feel it's really important that we don't just sit back and do nothing for 18 months while the inquiry is unfolding. There is a lot of work to be done. And so Mark Angelo, founder of International Rivers Day, and nearly two dozen Canadian scientists came together in Vancouver recently to participate in a think tank to find some answers and come up with some solutions that could be acted on sooner than later. This issue is very complex, and there is still much that we don't know. But when all is said and done, there was agreement on a number of key issues. Among those issues, climate change. Climate was seen as somewhat of an overarching uh, issue, but the exact ways in which it was affecting the survival are still a bit of a mystery, simply because there's not enough research. Now, and that's why we're, we're calling for more research into that. Research, or rather the lack of it, was seen as a serious problem. Almost all the research that DFO now uh, undertakes is undertaken in a freshwater environment. We do very little marine related research uh, and there is a lot, a lot of knowledge gap, many knowledge gaps out there that we have to fill. Another topic of concern, aquaculture. We need to compile historical data on the abundance and health of farmed salmon along the sockeye migration route in order to better understand the potential for transmission of disease and parasites to wild salmon. The scientists agreed that salmon farms should be experimentally removed from sockeye migration routes. They were also critical of DFO's apparent inability to accurately forecast salmon returns. And while they do not blame the collapse on fishing, which was greatly restricted this year, they do have some advice on the matter. Even before the federal judicial inquiry is completed, we must be prepared for the need for continued fisheries closures with Fraser sockeye numbers so low, there's concern that they may never be able to return to their former glory. And yet, giving up on them is unconscionable. We may not return to some of the boom times in terms of runs that we saw a few decades ago, but that said, our hope is that certainly we can continue to sustain a significant population of fish within the Fraser system.